Hi there, Oakhill. I just wanted to spend a few moments updating you on the direction of our church, on the gathering plans. And uh, first of all, let me just say that I miss you. Uh, I don't think any of us want to be gathering from a distance, sitting on our couches, watching a screen. Um, and I think we miss each other a lot. And I'm, I'm grateful for that uh, because uh, it shows the love that's there. Um, but it's also hard. The reality is that, that not much has changed in our county in the last month. Our county remains under a stay-at-home order. Uh, we are in the red phase of Governor Wolf's plan. And uh, the state has been very careful to not uh, say that churches are restricted uh, as a matter of church and state, but they've also given very strong recommendations to churches that in the red phase we not meet uh, in gatherings larger than 10 and uh, that we use online services for uh, for our gatherings and, and so we want to honor the state in that we want to have a good witness in that and and so uh, we are accommodating that and at the same time we're recognizing that the state is opening up certain parts of uh, of the state uh, certain counties and they are in a yellow phase and so we are looking at what those different phases will mean for our church and uh, the reality is that it, it takes a lot of wisdom and creativity and uh, things are just not as simple as they might seem of just, hey, we're all back together and everything's like it was before. Um, there, there are so many different factors to weigh. And so in that, I just wanted to ask a few things of you uh, as a member of Oak Hill, as a regular attender of Oak Hill. Uh, first of all, uh, would you pray? And I don't just mean pray for uh, a, a few seconds uh, and just say, God, help them. Uh, but would you carve out some time to pray diligently for the leaders that are in your life, uh, especially the state and government leaders, but also uh, the church leaders and, and the decisions that we need to make. The elders are going to be uh, meeting over the next week or so uh, to draft a plan for what reopening may look like. And that plan is going to need to be flexible, it's going to need to be um, comprehensive, and, and so we need a ton of wisdom. And, and the only place that we can go for wisdom is the Lord. In that, would you pray with us? Uh, on Tuesday night, we have a prayer meeting scheduled, online prayer meeting, uh, and that is via Zoom. And so would you carve out that time at 8 p.m. Tuesday night to fervently pray and let's lead out in prayer not not just asking God to bless the plans that we've already created but but to give us direction for what those plans even should be and then after as we pray as we pray we want to keep in mind three words and those three words that I'm going to hopefully repeat are charity unity and faith first of all charity uh, we need to recognize that there are a massive amount of opinions about a massive amount of things right now uh, about medical uh, procedures and what the what the virus even is uh, there's uh, opinions about the precautions that should be taken there's opinions about the politics behind it all and, and we just need to be so careful as citizens of an eternal kingdom that we don't get trapped in the conflicts and uh, debates of this world. That we can have different opinions while staying focused on the eternal kingdom. And we need to remember that the law of God's kingdom, the law of Christ, is that we would love one another. That is such a priority, and, and we need to show charity in matters of opinion. So what I would urge you to do in, in the next couple days, maybe a couple times, is to read over Romans 13 and 14. And even pray those things for our church, that we would be a Romans 13 and 14 church. It's so relevant to what we are dealing with, even though it's not uh, matters of, of food and drink and, 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 uh, and the, the Old Testament law, but it is matters of opinion. And with regards to matters of opinion, we need to bear with one another and show a tremendous amount of charity. And then that charity is going to give way to unity. And in the area of unity, I want you to consider this. Uh, it is going to require 
all hands on deck, all hands that can be on deck to be on deck. We recognize that there are some who are vulnerable and really shouldn't be uh, coming out as soon as others do. Uh, but it's going to require so many people involved to reopen our church. Uh, the reality is that we have had a very few amount of people doing a ton of work to make sure that we have a weekend broadcast. And I just want to thank those people, uh, the worship team, the tech team, the staff, the elders, uh, the preachers that have been a part of this preaching cohort. So much work has gone into this, and it's been uh, largely the same group of small, uh, uh, the same small group of people uh, doing that work. And, and so I just want to thank the, that team and the, those people that have been a part of that. In fact, if you just want to give them a, shoot them a text or an email and just thank them for the work that they've done, that'd be great. And then uh, it's going to require even more work to get back together. Teams that, that wisely uh, look at children's ministry and welcome ministry and, and all of the things that make a Sunday morning happen. Uh, we are going to need to be creative and careful and focused in all of those things. So charity, unity, and then the third word is faith. We need to approach this time in faith. We, we need to have faith that, that is bigger than anxiety, faith that is bigger than worry. We need to have faith that God is working and building his church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Let's take this next season by faith. Let's believe that God wants to do something big in our church. Okay, I miss you, and I just want you to know you are loved.